<laughs> Good evening, everyone. It's 7 o'clock, and I'd like to call this organizational regular board meeting of the Willoughby Eastlake Board of Education to order. Item 1C is the uh, roll call. Mr. Chanel, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Bear? Here. Mr. Boxler? Here. Mrs. Menser? Here. Mr. Roskis? Here. Mr. Vittori? Here. We have a quorum. All right, thank you, Mr. Chernell. Next item is item 1D, where we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. You all please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is item E, the oath of office to elect board members Christian Bear, William Boxler, and Stacey Menser. You want to come in front or right here? No, you go in front. Right. I don't know how this works. Do you solemnly swear? that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as members of the Board of Education of the Willoughby East Lake School District, Lake County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified. I do. Congratulations. <laughs> They're like, no. Well, do they want to? Do I hold my hand up? <laughs> oh, wait. I think they're going to come up, Bill. Oh, they're going to come up. We can wait for them. Okay. Peer <laughs> pressure. <laughs> yeah. A little bit shy. Oh, right here. Do you solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States in the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as members of the Board of Education of the Willoughby East Lake School District, Lake County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as members of the Board of Education of the Willoughby East Lake School District, Lake County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified? Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially discharge your duties as members of the Board of Education of the Willoughby East Lake School District, Lake County, Ohio, to the best of your ability and in accordance with the laws 
now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified. Okay. Congratulations. Next item is organizational item 1F, which is the election and open office for a Board of Education president to one year term. Oh, and I would like to ask uh, for nominations for the Board of Education president. Do I hear a nomination? Mr. President. I'd like to nominate Krista Bear. Thank you, Mr. Boxer. Do I hear a second? Mr. President, I will second the nomination. Thank you, Mr. Roskus. Are there any further nominations? Any items for discussion? Mr. Ternal, will you please call the the roll. <laughs> Still roll. Mrs. Bear? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mr. Roskis? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Krista Bear is now the president of the Willoughby East Lake City School District. I'm really enjoying being president pro tempus. <laughs> I'm going to miss this. <laughs> Item 1G is the uh, election and oath of office of the Board of Education vice president to one year term. Do I have a nomination for vice president? Mr. Vittori? Yes, Ms. Bear. Uh, I nominate Stacey Menzer for vice president. Thank you, Ms. Bear. Do I have a second for that nomination? Mr. Vittori? I'd like to second that nomination. Thank you, Mr. Boxer. Are there any more nominations? Are there any discussions? Mr. Charnella, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Bear? Yes. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mr. Roskis? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Stacey Menser is the Vice President for the Board of Education. At this time, the president and vice president will assume their roles as president and vice president. Congratulations, Mr. Vittori. You are no longer the president. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Vittori. <laughs> no work done. Good, good. All right. Do we have to take an oath or anything? None of that. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Okay. I'm too excited to let the words off the hook. <laughs> yeah. I'm just making sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you, Krista Bear, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of your office as President of the Board of Education of the Willoughby East Lake City School District to the best of your ability, and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during your continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified? I do. Congratulations. Stacey Menser, solemnly swear that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio, and that you will faithfully and impartially perform the duties of your office as Vice President of the Board of Education of the Willoughby East Lake City School District to the best of your ability, and in accordance with the laws now in effect and hereafter to be enacted during the <coughs> continuance in said office and until your successor is elected and qualified. Okay. Congratulations. Continue. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm going to do that often tonight until I get through this first meeting. Um, we, as your Board of Education, want to thank you for the opportunity to serve the Willoughby East Lake community and the students and staff of this district. We would also like to take a minute to review a few key parts of our Board of Education's philosophy. Um, the Board declares 
and thereby reaffirms its intent to the following. A, to maintain two-way communications with citizens of this district. The board shall keep them informed of the progress and problems of the school district, and the citizens shall be urged to bring their aspirations and concerns about the district to the attention of this body. And B, establish policies and make decisions on the basis of declared educational philosophy and goals. And C, we will act as a truly representative body for its citizens in all matters related to programs and operations. The board recognizes that ultimate responsibility for public education rests with the state, but the Board of Education has been assigned specific authority through statute, and the board shall not relinquish or fail to exercise that authority. Now, at this point in our organizational meeting, we have um, items H, for S, H through S for consideration. It's important to us that you understand that these items are required to be addressed in the first 15 days of each calendar year, it's per our bylaws and policies. Please observe <clears throat> on our agenda that items H through S have a little asterisk next to them. Any item which has this symbol is a part of our consent agenda. Now this consent, ag uh, this consent agenda has items that do not require individual motions or votes. And um, our adopted rules of parliamentary procedure, which is Robert's rules, provide for a consent agenda listing several items for approval of the board by a single motion. Most of the items listed under the consent agenda have gone through board subcommittee and or through superintendent and treasurer review and recommendation. Documentation concerning these items has been provided to all board members and the public in advance to ensure an extensive and thorough review. Items may be removed from the consent agenda at the request of any board member. And with that, we'll continue, uh, continue on with our meeting. Uh, Dr. Thompson? Item H for your consideration is the establishment of the Board of Education dates. And each year at this meeting, the Board of Education uh, will develop a schedule and set its meeting dates. This calendar can be adjusted throughout the year and frequently is, as needed for board discussions or actions. Each time a meeting is scheduled, the public is given 48 hours notice, and this is posted on our website and also in the newspaper. On rare occasions, such as when, an old board, when the old board office burned down, there was an emergency meeting of the board, and it is not legally necessary to give 48 hours, although that rarely happens, and hopefully we won't experience a board office burning down again. Um, and these meetings are always held in public. That's item H. Letter I, Robert's Rules of Order. Um, as Mrs. Bear mentioned, we do adopt Robert's Rules of Order in the absence of board policy. So this is your motions and your the roll calls. And so that's how we conduct business. Letter J, the board has requested that I become their designee for certified public records. So, and uh, that's since outstanding. I'm that's very excited about that <laughs> responsibility. Um, I'll be taking that training very soon. <laughs> and since I never formally uh, was appointed the designee for Mr. Roskis, I'm also his designee. So I have to be uh, their designee at least once per term and fulfill public records training because I am the public records custodian, a job I'm very happy to do on a day-to-day -day basis, but someone's got to do it. Um, we're being very sarcastic today, aren't we? No, <laughs> just you. Okay. Uh, letter K, establishment of the service fund for fiscal year 2022. Um, this is in accordance with Ohio Revised Code 3315.15. This uh, allows the board to establish a fund which cannot exceed $2 per child, which our current enrollment is $7,401, or $20,000, whichever is greater. So that may be set aside from the general fund to be known as the service fund, and it's only to be used in paying the expenses of the members of the Board of Education actually incurring in performance of their duties or of their official representatives who are sent out of the dis school district for the purpose of promoting the welfare of the school under their charge. So the recommendation is that it be set at the $20,000 amount. So that would allow you guys to get training and whatever else you desire while performing your duties as board members. 
Letter L, recommendations by the Board of Education to authorize the treasurer. This would be to request advances of taxes collected in calendar year 22. I'll be sending that resolution to Mr. Galloway tomorrow. Very excited about that. Uh, <laughs> to reinvest available funds in calendar year 22 in accordance with board policy and establish administrative procedures. Uh, the summaries of these investments are also in monthly board reports throughout the year. And letter C, to pay bills within the adopted appropriations in calendar year 22. Letter M, these are the appointments of our legal counsel. Uh, you could see the legal counsels that we use frequently, Squire, Patton, Boggs, this would be who would conduct our uh, debt resolutions or levy resolutions. Uh, Hoover Casey on, they do our Board of Revisions. Walt Walter Haverfield, their general counsel, as is Peters, Clue, and Marcakis. So we just, we have multiple just in case uh, we're not able to, one is unable to meet our needs at that time, as, as far as those two, those two. Letter N, Board of Education meeting minutes. They are to be provided to the board, members of the Board of Education. Um, with three days or more in advance of the meeting, an authorization is given for the board to waive reading of the minutes at the meeting. So, I know how much you don't want me to read those minutes every meeting, so uh, that's why you're given that notice, and you have the ability to waive those. Resolution requesting notification, uh, be it resolved that the treasurer is able to approve the resolution requesting that the Board of Education be notified by the Tax Commissioner of any application for exemption from taxation for any property located within the district. Uh, this is in accordance with our Revised Code 5715.27. Letter P is the tax budget. I'm very sad that no one really wanted to talk about it. <laughs> Nobody. Um, this, these are the funds. Uh, set by the county auditor's office or with the county auditor's office. These are just funds that are levied through our emergency levies, our uh, operating levy from 1976, our permanent improvement levy, and our bond issue. So those are all presented. Those are, that's what we can collect. That is not what we're going to spend. So I want to state that these are not appropriations, that is just levied um, amounts. Resolution for group health, vision, and dental insurance for board members. Um, the, all of the board members are allowed to partake in the health insurance plan for the school district. However, it would be 100% cost for the school board members to partake, and you would have to elect that you'd like to do that in public session. So this is like a qualifying event. If you, any of you want to enroll, <laughs> just let me know. No. Okay. No. no. Uh, Pre-authorization of advance of funds. This just allows me to make advances within the month. Uh, so just based off of timing. Um, the board meetings are held earlier in the month. At the end of the month, I might need to make an advance. This just gives me pre-authorization to make that advance and then I'll get it board approved at the next meeting. Uh, item S is the hiring authority. This, this item gives the superintendent the ability to employ personnel on a temporary basis until the next board meeting or, and then seek board approval. This is done so that vacancies can be filled and we can continue to operate smoothly. As always, prior to being hired, a person must pass a background check and meet all the interview criteria. Okay. So this requires a motion, correct? Mm -hmm. Just making sure. Yes. So uh, do I hear a motion to approve item S, hiring authority? Madam President, I make a motion to approve item 1S, hiring authority. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I second that motion. Okay. The floor is open for discussion. It's a pretty cut and dry one. Got to keep the, the district operating right. between meetings. It, it doesn't happen all that frequently. 
but it would be just in a case where someone resigns at a time when we didn't see coming or someone becomes ill, something of that nature. Uh, hearing no more discussion, Mr. Tarnello, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskis? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Baer? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, so at this time, the organizational portion of our meeting has been completed. Our agenda is shifting to cover items, which are part of a regular board meeting structure. Um, next, we have uh, number two, community engagement, A, board president, Q&A, and, second. Um, this portion of the meeting is where we will address questions or public comments made in the previous meeting, and this one would be December. The uh, only public comment that was made in the December meeting was addressed, it was Macy, Stacy McQuiggan. Um, she spoke in December. We um, expanded on her question in regards to safe school and uh, security and felt that the question was answered during board discussion at that meeting. And we as a board would also like to make it a general practice to address publicly emails that we receive in between meetings. Um, we received an email questioning uh, the relationship uh, from a constituent in the community, questioning the relationship between uh, our district and OSBA and they asked for clarification and um, just a little bit of discussion on the OSBA item. Um, that will be detailed in item D under the renewal levy resolution today. Um, we'll transition now to B, public comment. Now, the policy which outlines public comment was amended and adopted in the December 2021 meeting. Uh, there were changes made and it had its second reading in December. We feel it is important that the revised policy be read publicly in advance of our community's participation in tonight's meeting. So this is the actual policy. The Board of Education recognizes the value to school governance of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. The Board offers public participation to members of the public in accordance with the procedures below. The board applies these procedures to all speakers and does not discriminate based on the identity of the speaker, the content of the speech, or the viewpoint of the speaker. The board is also committed to conducting its meeting in a productive and efficient manner. That assures that the regular agenda of the board is completed in a reasonable period of time. We will honor the voluntary nature of the board's time and using that efficiently and allows for a fair and adequate opportunity for input to be considered. The presiding officer of each board meeting, the president, um, <clears throat> is permitted shall administer the rules of the board for its conduct. The presiding officer shall be guided by the following rules. A, public participation shall be permitted as indicated on the order of business and or at the discretion of the presiding officer. B, attendees must register with their intention to participate in the public participation portion of the meeting upon their arrival. Uh, C, individuals may not register others to speak during public participation. D, participants must first be recognized by the presiding officer and will be requested to preface their comments by an announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if and when appropriate. Each statement made by a participant shall be limited to three minutes in duration unless extended by the presiding officer. All statements shall be directed to the presiding officer. No person may address or question board members individually. The presiding officer may um, and interrupt, warn, or terminate a participant's session when they make comments that are repetitive, obscene, and or comments that constitute a true threat. Um, request any individual to stop speaking and or leave the meeting when that person does not observe reasonable decorum or is disruptive to the conduct and or orderly progress of the meeting. Request the assistance of law enforcement officers in the removal of a disorderly person when the person's conduct interferes with the conduct and or orderly progress of the meeting, or call for a recess or an adjournment to another time when the lack of public decorum so interferes with the orderly conduct of the meeting, um, and also to waive these rules. The portion of the meeting during which the participation of the public is invited shall be limited to 20 minutes unless extended by a vote of the board. We encourage those uh, in attendance tonight, um, if you are not speaking, if you've not chosen to pre-register during the public comment, please send questions or concerns directly via email to the board. 
This will ensure that your concerns are issued to us and it will not impact this meeting's ability to address the stated items on our agenda in a timely manner. Um, with that, Mr. Tarnello, who is our first participant in public comment? Uh, we have Stacy McQuiggan. Hi, welcome to all the new members. Nice to see you up there. Um, I'm Stacy McWiggin. My address is 36260 Valley Vista Drive in Eastlake. Um, <clears throat> at the last meeting, um, I requested that you ask the homeroom teachers at the middle school and the high school level to have the students take their phones out and add the Safe School helpline uh, to their phones. I may be mistaken, but I don't think this has been done yet. Um, I'm, I'm hoping not only would the teachers have the student add the number of the Safe Schools helpline to their phone in their presence or download the app, but if they could quickly explain that this line gets cell phone, um, it can get texts, it can get voicemails, and it can be used to report thefts. It can be used to um, highlight safety issues. It can be used to talk about mental health issues, um, their own or a student that they're concerned about. Um, also vandalism. I'm not sure that they're aware of all the things that can, that's, that line can be used for. Um, Mr. Fry mentioned at the boosters meeting in October that after the SOS presentation, um, he had 15 to 20 students that were referred to him. So I think it's really important that students are aware that they can use this helpline for referrals as well. And it's, it's not just, you know, um, a weapon or whatnot, but obviously that's very important. Um, after speaking with Eileen Bowers, it seems our relationship with Crossroads hasn't quite worked out as planned um, since they've been unable to provide the clinicians that we requested. I understand this is a very difficult time to staff mental health professionals as the industry overall is short staffed, but at the same time our need is probably greater than ever. I was wondering if we could start to think outside of the box how we can better utilize the mental health professionals that we already have in our district. Um, is their time being spent with students or do they have other administrative duties that can be managed elsewhere? I noticed when I was working at the middle school that they don't have an administrative assistant anymore in the guidance office. I, I think they have them at the high schools. It doesn't look like they have them at the middle schools. I believe at one time they did. Um, and that was just one area where I was thinking, well, these guidance counselors are most likely meeting with students, but then they're also having to do the administrative role. And so if we can't fill the role with mental health professionals, can we make sure the guidance counselors are meeting one-on-one -on -one and maybe fill an administrative role, even from a part-time perspective? So that was just one example of thinking outside the box. And um, I know most of you talked during your campaign that mental health is extremely important. That's what the staff has mentioned. So thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McQuiggan. I hope I said that correctly. Was that? Oh, it's fine. I, I answered all of them. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Mr. Charnello, do we have anyone else for public comment? No, we do not. Okay. Item three is board discussion. And so what I would like to cover is safety and student climate, what we're doing in terms of immediate action and have already instituted uh, safety and student climate, more long range proposals, a COVID update, remote learning plans, and a discussion I would like to have about overnight um, field trips. So it's a lot, I know, uh, but these are all pretty pressing issues that I think it's important that we cover. And I will slide out of my corner and make my way around. Thank you. I've been told I just pushed a button, right, Dave? Wow, how about that? Nice work, Dave Miner. Um, so just some things that I'd like to cover are safety and student climate, um, our immediate actions, those long range proposals, COVID, remote, just what I just covered. So what we've done, and it's made a significant difference so far in our buildings, we have added additional SROs in, um, in our high schools and middle schools. 
to add more security. Uh, Willowick Middle, for example, does not have a full-time SRO, but we have requested that. They're having the same challenges that uh, all, all walks of life have, and that is finding the officers available to do that. But so far, we've had additional officers at North, South, and Willoughby Middle. Also, the police chiefs have agreed. We've had a meeting with the police chiefs, and they have agreed to conduct um, random walkthroughs of day shift personnel. So they're walking through at random times. Would you mind passing those out for me? What, he's, what I'm handing out or what uh, Mr. Charnello is handing out are specific details about what, we'll be, what, we'll be go what we're going through right now. Hall monitors have been posted in the hallways and outside of restrooms. Restrooms are our hot spots. There are 153 cameras at each high school. You cannot do anything at the high schools without being on cameras, and we're adding additional cameras at our middle schools as well. So, unfortunately, the bathrooms have become the hot spots. So what we're asking hall monitors to do is a large group walks into the bathroom, use your radio, call for the police. Um, you hear loud noise in there, call for the police, and depending on the gender of the person to walk in, if it's gender appropriate. School administration has been encouraged to be visible in the hallways in between classes as well, to spread themselves out. Uh, spoke with the police this morning, one of our SROs, and they said it's very effective because what had been happening to some extent was kids would see where the SRO was and do whatever they wanted to do on the other side of the building, and now they don't know where they are and we're rotating and moving those SROs. And then we're encouraging our staff to be visible in the hallways as well, as much as we possibly can. So far, since January 3rd, it's made a pretty significant difference. So we have an, uh, an overarching goal, and our goal is to meet the educational emotional needs of some of the most at-risk students that are currently responding to personal crisis by demonstrating aggressive behaviors in the school environment. So what we want to do is create an alternative school for the purpose of improving safety, improving cl school climate, and the high schools and middle schools, and addressing the needs of those identified students. So we're designing, an, uh, what we're working on right now is designing a, a place actually housed what we believe would be South High School. Uh, if you are familiar with South High School, the old weight room or the old shop areas, it's probably about 4,000 square feet or so. Uh, back there, there are two rooms and there's a couple of rooms we can move into as well if we need that. But we're designing for 40 high school students and 20 middle school students are the ability to house up to 60 students. It would be self-contained. They would enter in uh, their own entrance, exit in their own exit, and have their own bathrooms. Uh, the emphasis will be on mental health, much like what Stacy talked about. We certainly know that's a major issue. The challenge with mental health is that when we first started our mental health program, we were the first school district in Lake County to do so. And so we got all of our, we got our pick, if you will, of the staff members that were available. And even that was still hard to staff all the way up. And then after a couple of failed levies, um, by, by vote of the community to some extent, it was determined that that was lower on the priority list of things to return. And our staffing was cut. Subsequently, since then, all the other schools in Lake County have adopted the same program that we adopted, or that we created. And now staffing is next to impossible. So that is the challenge with finding mental health counselors. Now I have a new board, but the previous board wanted to make sure that these people were all certified. That was an important component for the previous board. So I don't know where you stand on that, but um, that makes it more challenging, but the concern was that you would have people that weren't qualified. When you talk about guidance counselors, in, even in high schools, guidance counselors are not trained mental health professionals. It's a very different um, category of um, 
type of training, better than nothing for sure, but that's not what they specialize in. So we'll also use our behavior intervention specialist to help us uh, make those modifications. If you're familiar with Bridge to Success, it is a combination of an online program and teachers in the room helping facilitate those students as well. So it's a hybrid model of delivering curriculum to our students. It'd be a basic curriculum, graduation type of curriculum. Just because you go there doesn't mean you stay there forever, but you would go there for obviously disciplinary reasons, behavioral reasons. Uh, there would also need to be a change to district policy moving into next year. And once our, we get further in this process, you'll see some recommendations for changes to district policy. Uh, for example, um, our student code of conduct as it, re as it relates to what are the consequences of getting in a fight, for example. So I would anticipate, for example, on that one, that next year, first fight would result in a 10-day out-of-school suspension, second fight would result in a 10-day out-of-school suspension with recommendation for expulsion. Now, it's important to note that students on IEPs, individualized education plans, can only be suspended from school, federal statute, for up to 10 days. If a student's behavior is a manifestation of their disability, they can be suspended zero days. That is federal statute. However, assignment to an alternative school is not a suspension or an expulsion. So that's why it's, an, I think, partially important to invest into this type of programming and to get them the intensive needs met that we're not meeting for them in the regular school setting. So there'll be a lot, some, some changes. So an alternative school committee is working through the development process and forming this program. The next step is they'll be finally way down the road where the board has the specific steps that we're going to follow. But we'll present, our plan is to present on April 11th the full plan in its entirety. And then ask for board support of that plan in May. And the reason May is sort of the drop dead, remember we have to staff this. So we have to hire people. And some of these people have some specialized skills. So that's going to take some time. But the goal is to have this school functional by the start of the next school year. Any questions about that? Why don't I pause there? I know that's a lot. It's got a lot to, to take in. Thank you. Um, in regards to the alternative school committee, it says the committee will seek input from parents and students during the planning process. Mm -hmm. I know that this is in development, but what is this pre-framing looking like? What is, how are we soliciting that feedback and input? Well, the committee's going to meet with students okay. in smaller groups. Uh, they'll meet with parents and we'll do some surveys. So I think that's probably our best way to engage with the community. Yes, sir. You mentioned the target population would be 40 high school and 20 middle school, all but all at that location at South? That's correct. And is that just those figures are based on size of the space or? Well, we started with, I asked the question to the building principals, and I think this is what's getting lost. What, is your, what are your students like? And they'll tell you that the vast, vast majority of our students are awesome. They're great. It's a handful of kids that are destroying the climate. Well, what's a handful? So we got into some deep discussions about, well, how many is that really? How many kids are really that disruptive that is changing the culture of the school? And that's where we came up with that number, so we sought space that could accommodate that. Gotcha. Anything else? Hey. Yes, sir. Do you have a, an estimate on um, staffing and costs? Well, that's what we're working through right now. Some of it uh, is contractually based. So um, we'll have to see how, I think on one hand, the unions will be in general, some of them are here, I think in general, <laughs> not to laugh out loud and identify yourself, right? But I think they'll view this positively that some of 
the more difficult students might be placed in somewhere that's going to better meet their needs. But the question just becomes in how do we deliver that curriculum and the delivery of the curriculum is what makes all the difference in the world. So that's what has to be, you'll see a, that there's a date coming very soon uh, where I'm meeting with the union president of the teachers union and that's where we'll begin those discussions about what that looks like and that will significantly impact the budget one way or the other. Okay. I did have a question. So these students that were identified um, by principals, how will their parents and they themselves be involved in this process? Is it voluntary to go to the alternative school? How does that work? Well, we're, we're working through placement, identification and placement. So okay. some student, so for example, we'll have a student we have Bridge to Success currently, BTS program. BTS programs has about 1,100 kids that have graduated since its inception that would have never graduated from high school. The problem with BTS for a lot of our kids and our parents is you're all, the, the students are only there for two hours a day. And while that works for some kids, it doesn't work for a lot of other kids and certainly not middle school age students. So they reject that program. So, you know, one student that was talked about is a 17 year old with no high school credits and then his third year in one of our high schools. Um, that's a formula for disaster and it has been. So we would reach out to that students and through and with their parents and have a meeting with them and develop a plan to help that kid actually have a shot at graduating. You can work through BTS computer-based programs faster if you choose to, or you can languish and never graduate ever. You know, that's possible as well. But with the hybrid model, at least there's teachers there and they would be assigned and be there every day, all day, just like a regular school day. They would also be eligible to earn their way out, and they would also be eligible to participate in extracurricular activities as well, as long as they're meeting their behavioral expectations. Some kids would be assigned there as an option of expulsion or assignment. You choose. So that's how it, it wouldn't be populated at 60 on day one but would be probably fairly quickly. Yes, sir. Who's making up the committee? Uh, it's, making, it's made up of some teachers. Uh, well, we're for, we actually have the meeting, I believe it is on Wednesday, I believe. So I've got a core group right now of central office. I've got to have I'm a special ed director on it, need a curriculum person, need building principals on it. There'll be some teachers that'll be on it, and there's some other interested staff that are, uh, that are have expressed that they'd like to participate. So that's what we're looking at, a fairly diverse group from the middle schools, high schools, and central office. Have we reached out to anybody outside of the schools who may have experience in this kind of situation? Yes, actually, um, we have trips planned to three different schools right now that run these programs, and we're sitting down with them. That committee will sit down with them and visit their school, see how it works, and, and talk to those people as well. And then we'll have um, a consultant from ODE talk to us as well. So those will all be things that will transpire between now and April. Anything else? This, um, each week you provide us an update with a variety of different things. This will be something continuously on that update, correct? That document that you're looking at is a living, breathing document. Yep. And I already know we've added some steps to it already okay. since I printed it. So that'll be something that you'll be continuously updated on. Where are we? How's it progressing? What's it look like? Um, you know, what are our options? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I just think it's important that we be responsive to what we're seeing and traditional disciplinary approaches is simply not working. So I wanted to bring you up to speed on where we are um, with COVID. Actually in a better spot than what I anticipated. 
Um, we were in worse shape heading into Christmas break. Uh, if I had wood, I would knock on it uh, than we are right now. But um, so far, we've been solid for a, for a Monday. We were in really good shape. Um, so, and we already have Friday and Monday off that are scheduled off days. So I think that's going to help us as well. But currently we have a combined students and staff at 123, um, current student cases at 104. So to put that in perspective, you're looking at, um, you know, about 900 staff members and we're somewhere around, oh, 18, 19 that are infected right now or are, are, are COVID positive. So that's a fairly low number compared to what we've had um, leading up. Um, currently, active classroom teachers are 10. That's as low as I've seen it in a long time as well. So I know that we're seeing raging numbers across the country, but for whatever reason, it's not impacting our teaching staff dramatically right now. Um, our active support staff is at nine, and total district, um, we've had a, about 1,389 students that, and staff that have uh, recovered from COVID and have returned to the school. So, I, but I, in case things do go south, I wanted to give you an update on administratively how we intend to deal with that. So, uh, we would move to remote learning for classrooms for the shortest time possible. And we have done that a few times. Uh, but we would close by classrooms first. Then grade levels if we need to, because what we have found is it usually is a breakout in a grade level, if it's typically. Right now we're not seeing that, but that would be next, close a grade level. Next would be to close the building for the shortest amount of time possible, not the district, but a building. Now, if we start to get hit more across, the, the goal will be to transition middle schools and high schools to remote learning and utilize all our available district substitutes and, and push them down to the elementaries to try to keep our elementaries open. Why try to keep our elementaries open? Why is it more important than middle schools and high schools? Other than the fact of young kids and trying to work and, and, and babysit a second grader that's home for five days, um, we know that the learning loss is dramatically worse for our elementary students than it is for our high school and middle school. It's not good for any of them, quite frankly, but worse for elementary. Um, and their attention spanned on, I, I can only imagine, and my heart goes out to you parents that have elementary students when you're trying to get them to get on the computer and stay on a computer all day, that would have to be uh, right up there with one of the worst tasks, I think, of a parent you might encounter. So we will do everything we can to keep our schools open, but in the event that we start getting hit hard in the next week or two, which some have said, experts have said may happen as a result of Christmas and New Year's, this would be our plan to try and at minimally uh, keep our um, elementaries open. And then of course, if that's not possible, then we would transition to, to remote learning. Um, Dave, how many computers have we gotten in over the last couple of weeks? Yeah, a lot. You got a, and we got the cases in as well, correct? So we're in a much better position now than we ever have been in our plans, which is not the topic for today, but we hope to be one-to-one, -one, which you'll get a presentation on that soon as we finalize that. But um, we anticipate that we'll be one-to-one -one next year. We're pretty darn close to it right now. The last thing to discuss is um, your thoughts on field trips. <clears throat> Some of them are pressing. The first one on that list is probably the singular most pressing, and that's marching band and choir go to Disney in March 20th to 24th, 
and we have 178 people who have paid $1,600. Um, 126 of those have purchased the travel insurance, meaning 52 have not. Um, the refund on travel insurance is 75%. Although they do have until this Friday to purchase the travel insurance, they've been encouraged, or the, the staff has been encouraged to encourage the parents to purchase that. It's like $80, and I know we don't want to spend $80 if we don't have to, but I would highly recommend spending $80 when you're talking about $1,600 that's out there. So hopefully parents will be responsive and do that. So I wanted to bring it to you. You can see on those back page um, talks about in the typed writing what some of the school districts around us for, for what it's worth are doing. Kirtland's canceled overnight field trips and have left day trips intact. Mentor has canceled the trip to Washington, D.C. I don't know who, what grade, I assume middle school. Um, but they built uh, in a full refund to families. Parma has all trips intact, and Chardon plans to cancel seventh grade trip to Chicago and eighth grade trip to D.C. Others are under consideration, so it's a very mixed bag how school districts are responding to field trips. But this, the more notice we give, the better in terms of our intent. I do have some questions in regards to this. Mm -hmm. If uh, these students were, if the field trips were kept on, let's take that hypothetical for a minute, do we have or what plan do we have in place to support somebody who maybe were to test positive and have travel disrupted? How can we accommodate quarantine if it were to occur? And how are parents being notified of these circumstances and how they'll be held? And, I mean, those are all very good questions. And, you know, so for example, typically on the trips to um, Disney, for example, there'll be four students in a hotel room, obviously to drive down the cost of the trip. One student gets COVID um, by time we show symptoms, we've probably been shedding some type of viral load for three or four days or so. Um, isolation at that point, you would do to the best extent that you could, but we would be can, dependent on the hotel and their ability to help us isolate. Can't put the student on a plane and then we still got to bus them back. So uh, an expectation that a parent would, I mean, we would hope that some parents would be able to come down and, and, and retrieve their child, but that would be very difficult for some parents and depending on, you know, the trip's only a few days, depending on flight availability, et cetera. Well, they can't fly, they'd have to drive because they can't put their child in a, on a flight. So. Mm -hmm. It presents a lot of challenges without any doubt. And are they scheduled to fly down or to take? No, they're bu they bus. They're going to bus. Yeah. In this particular case. How are athletics handled right now? Are they, are, are we doing test to play? It's test to play. Is athletics. that an option here? Test to go. Well, I think we absolutely should test before they go if we can get a hold of enough tests. Uh, right now that's a challenge, but um, my understanding is that they're in the mail, right? Kids are in the mail. Um, so I, I'm not, that, that would be our challenge, but they should definitely test to go. But again, you have the problem, well, I mean, you test positive, you can't go, I mean, clearly, right? But um, we would, you know, again, we would want them in the Disney case to at least purchase that insurance so they get 75% of it back. A part of that travel insurance, is there anything for if the students were to fall ill that it would help combat the cost or cover the cost of singularly traveling back? I don't, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Okay. I'll find out. Would you make that note for me? If a parent can't come down to retrieve their child, 
to get them back via car, who stays the a staff member would have to stay with the positive child? We're going to assign board members to drive down there and pick them up. <laughs> you didn't know that? Like on the that, was, that was part of what you signed up for. I'll, I'll be down there in a day or two. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, you'll, it'll take you four days to get back home, won't it? I, those are all really good questions and you know why I wanted to have this discussion was to ferret out. I mean, there, there are so many scenarios that, um, I mean, there's liability issue. There's a whole host here, and I think that's probably why some places have canceled. What's the purpose of, see, what are you trying to accomplish with this? Just situational awareness right today, or are you looking for answers today? Well, I think what, what I need to know is, you know, what's the will of the board? What, what do you, um, my recommendation would be that we take it on a case-by-case -case basis. So, for example, with um, marching band and choir, this is North High School, by the way, for Disney, as we make an assessment closer to March, you know, if, if, you know, I'm certainly no health expert, although throughout the last two years I've been called upon to make decisions as, as if I'm a health expert. Um, but what we did see in Africa where Omicron started was it spiked, and it, as quickly as it spiked, it dropped. If that's the case, if that happens here in the United States, similarly, by March we could have low numbers. I don't know, are we ever going to be in a situation where we don't have some variant? I, I, I'm beginning to lose hope and think that that's probably not going to be the case. I don't want to recklessly send our kids into, into a danger area, but at the same time, I, I want them to experience what we can experience as long as we can do it as safely as but there's no, there's no there's no guarantees, right? I mean, somebody's going to go down there and get COVID or bring it back. I mean, it's just probably the way it is. But you know, we'll ha they'll mask. We'll be masking and all those things, you know, to try and do our very best to prevent spread. But I I don't know. At, at some of these other ones, it wouldn't bother me as much to cancel. Day trips don't scare me. They're all together anyways, so why cancel a day trip? It's just the overnight that um, I think needs at least discussed. So at this point, what conversation or communication have you had from the parents of the children who are participating? Are they expressing concerns? Are they asking for us to proceed? And is their child? Um, you know, I think in general, the consensus is it's my child, and if I'm willing to take the risk and send them, then you should allow it. I mean, that's the majority of my conversations, but, uh, but it varies from person to person. But we still have to be, we're the sponsoring entity, yeah. so we have to be well, the welfare At least of the children. Responsible to yeah. the extent that we feel we should be responsible for. So, if this trip was to D.C. today, I would, or uh, Florida today, I would probably recommend not to do that. But by March, um, I'm hopeful that the numbers will be down enough across the across the state that we can justify that move. But Does North make this trip every year, or pre-COVID? Are they doing it? No, it's um, yeah, it's every. They, every they get one opportunity in their four-year career to go. So if you're a if you're a senior, you're out. I mean, perhaps they could go next year to make up for this year, but we've been saying that a lot lately. <clears throat> this looks like it's the only one currently it's, on here out of state. Well, there will be two that I haven't got the exact location on. There'll be baseball trips on here, too. Baseball generally goes out, not every year, but I, they did not, the athletic departments did not respond yet. But have you, 
if it, does anyone have a child on the varsity baseball team? I do. And are they not going? I haven't heard yet. They didn't you go would last have heard year. By now. Yeah. Okay, that's good. They don't go every year, but they go a lot, a lot of years. So these were. This was a mass email out to the administration to respond. What are your field plan field trips? A lot of them are reduced because from last year to this year, we just they weren't scheduled like a typical year. Um, what planned reviews are with the, the so the, the marching band and choir, obviously the directors of those, plus those families. Is there any uh, meeting set to discuss this amongst themselves in the near future where we could have feedback provided to us? I mean, clearly this Friday is shortly upon us, but. Well, the, the response from, I got a long email um, from Mr. P, if you know Mr. P, I don't know that he writes anything but long emails, but, um, and he'd be the first to admit that, but the reaction from the staff was, you aren't thinking about canceling this, are you? No. That was basically the reaction from the staff. And we feel that's representative of what the families and children's reaction is. I don't know that that's, well, yes, I would think that's pretty reactionary of how the majority of families would respond. They want to go. I think they want to go and be safe, but they want to go. That's the biggest one, though, first one listed. Yeah. Are there any legal issues that we have to deal with with that, sending them? Of course, yeah. I mean, there's some liability there. Um, and you can't waive liability, so the normal reaction is to, well, make them sign a waiver. You can, but you can't waive liability, right, Nick? general rule of thumb. So at this point in time, is it your request that the board kind of let you know where we're at with day trips versus overnight? That's exactly, you know, what I don't want to do is get out in front of you and I'm making proclamations about what we're going to do and we haven't discussed it. So yep. this is your opportunity to tell me what your thoughts are, what you want to see. Um, my recommendation is we continue day trips and then these larger trips as they come up um, make an assessment closer to the date because at this point they're already at best going to get 75 percent back anyways whether we cancel now or we cancel a month from now mm -hmm. i feel better about making that decision closer than this far away so that's i guess and then we certainly will come up with some protocols, for testing protocols and some other things that we would expect them to do, provided we can get the tests. Do we talk, do we talk amongst ourselves or do we talk yeah. to him? Or? We can talk, well, so. Well, I'll say, even though I went to South, <laughs> I want these kids at North to go to the marching band and take this trip for sure. So I'm all for supporting your recommendation, waiting a little bit, let's see how it goes. And, um, but yeah, this is every, every four years, uh, they have, these kids have to have something to look forward to. And I, I'm in support of it personally, and w at least waiting a little bit longer and before. I agree with Lawrence. I agree. They should have the I think that's a reasonable go. process. I agree as a parent, you have the ability to withdraw your child from the trip if you want to. And I feel that this is an amazing opportunity as well. So I would w want to wait a little bit. I'm just concerned that over the last, I mean, two years, it's not anyone's fault, but we've just taken so much away from our kids Way too much. that um, it's impacting them academically, socially, mentally, and so many different ways that um, we're just going to have to continue to make some really difficult decisions moving forward but that's why you ran for the board because you wanted to exactly. do it right <laughs> what so. i what i would like to ask is between now and you know kind of the end date is to ensure that the teachers in charge are providing an opportunity for parents voices to be heard having routine communications 
and then the next tenant we bring to it, I would like to know how are those parents responding? What are their feedbacks? Is it the same or is it changed? So what I'll do is I'll send out some, um, I'll have a meeting with those folks, those uh, that are leading these trips and ask them to survey their, yeah. their parents and to have a meeting with their parents and see, get a better handle on where they stand. I think I know, but I can't say with certainty that I do know. I just want to make sure their voice is a part of this conversation. Sure. Understood. Understood. Anything else? Okay. That's a lot on January uh, 10th. 10th. <laughs> Still four more hours. Mr. Johnson. So the next item on our agenda is our minutes and um, the approval of the minutes from December 13th of 2021. Uh, do I hear a motion to discuss this item? Madam President, I would like Thank to make did. a motion to approve the minutes of December 13th, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Roscoe. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I will second that motion. Thank you, Ms. Vittori. The floor is open for discussion. <laughs> okay, hearing no more discussion, Mr. Tarnello, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskis? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Bear? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Uh, moving on to the Treasurer's Report, Letter 5A is the financial report for the month ended December 31st, 2021. I'd like to point out that we are still in line overall with where we expect to be in terms of our ending cash balance, which is the first graph in the report. The January-February time frame is always our lowest cash point, just based on how we are funded with uh, property taxes. So we'll start to see those tax advances at the end of February, even in March. So we usually spike up and then spend down. So uh, that's why we're, you know, we're seeing those lines go down and dipping right there. But that's every year if you see all the other previous years. House Bill 110 did launch uh, about last week sometime. However, I, you know, I want to give ODE some time to vet that and work through some bugs just because I feel like the numbers are a little off. However, uh, we are looking lighter than the simulations had promised. So uh, a little concerning. Um, we're working off the best data we had, but I don't think it's gonna be as great for us as we thought it would be. So just temporary expectations. Uh, as I get more information, I'll let you know, hopefully next month or two. But I want to give you that update just so you weren't surprised and like, oh man, I thought this was gonna be out in December, or then January, then all of a sudden in March, I'm like, yeah, here we are. So um, the only thing we could do is continue to manage our expenses. Uh, naturally, things like brand new alternative schools aren't going to help that. Um, but you know that's the cost of doing what we do. We can't be you know save, save, save. We're in this to educate kids and provide in safe environments and mental health services and give a, a really great program to these kids um, while at the same time at the same time trying to be fiscally responsible. So. It's a, you got, it's a balancing act, so we'll do it with the best we can. Letter 5B is a renewal levy resolution. This is a 10-year levy, emergency levy, and it is for $4.745 million per year. And that is up for your vote. <clears throat> so letter B, renewal levy resolution. Do I hear a motion to discuss this item? Madam Chairman, woman, <laughs> I make yes, a motion Mr. Boxler. to discuss Treasurer's, item five, Treasurer's report, uh, item B, renewal levy resolution. Okay. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I will second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Roscos. Um, the floor is open for discussion. It's my understanding that we'll be discussing this resolution more at our special meeting on the 24th, if 
Yes, well, there is a second resolution that needs to be placed before the board to place it actually on the ballot with the Board of Elections. The first resolution is delivered to the county auditor's office, as Mr. Galloway ran away before I gave it, gave it to him. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. So that they could certify uh, the millage that it would take to generate $4,745,000 per year. So we're, we need that figure for the second resolution, which will then go <coughs> to, uh, for your vote, and then to the Board of Elections. Okay. And this is a renewal levy. Renewal this levy. This is not new, new money, new millage. Correct. Yes. Renewal. This is the five year or ten year? This is the ten year. This is the ten year. Any more discussion? Okay. Hearing no, just uh, no more discussion. Mr. Charnell, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler. Yes. Mr. Roskus. Yes. Mr. Vittori. Yes. Mrs. Menser. Yes. Mrs. Bear. Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Letter 5C. Uh, this is also an organizational item. This is the Board of Education member compensation resolution. It states that the members of the board shall be constant compensated at $125 per meeting attended during the calendar year 2022 up to a maximum of 36 meetings. Don't get too excited with your 125 bucks. Letter 5D, this is the OSBA annual membership dues. Uh, this is for the membership within the Ohio School Boards Association for calendar year 22. The amount to be for that membership is $9,208, and this would include the electronic subscription to OSBA's briefcase, and last year this cost $8,720. And this is based off of the district's enrollment. Uh, do I hear a motion to discuss item D, OSBA annual membership dues? Madam President, I will make a motion to uh, discuss item 5D, OSBA annual membership dues. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I'll second that motion. Okay, the floor is open for discussion. Um, Mr. Tarnello, I spent some time on the phone with OSBA today and uh, Dr. Thompson as well. Please do let me know if this is accurate or not. Um, not only do they provide uh, ability for us to, as a board, call to discuss legal issues or policy, which I have done many times since November 4th, um, they support the board's ability to, to really govern, to trust but verify the things that are being done, correct? And it's, it's really a board support, and in there, the resources ensure that we are governing the district in a way that will best support it and the thriving of the children that are enrolled in the district. Is that fair? That is fair. And they've, they've done things for us like conduct um, salary studies, they've done numerous projects for us and have advised the board at different times about different topics. They are essentially your only, as far as I know, uh, board professional organization to guide and support boards of education across the country. In 17 years I've never worked for a school board that was not part of OSBA. As I understand it, they are strictly an advisory board. We're under no obligation to no. them whatsoever to take any of their recommendations. No. Mm -hmm. Correct. That's correct. And then OSBA does write policy, but our district does not subscribe to their policy. We use NEOLA, correct? That's correct. correct. And the price that drives this uh, is based on student enrollment? Yes, it's dollar, same dollar figure for every student in the, in the state, state of Ohio, but based on your student population. Okay, uh, any more discussion? Okay, um, Mr. Charnell, please take a roll call. Hearing no more discussion, take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskus? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Mrs. Bear? Yes. Passes 4-1. 5E, OSBA Legal Assistance Fund. 
it is the recommendation that we enter into the contract with the Ohio School um, Business Association or School Board Association for the Legal Assistance Fund Consultant Services for the period of January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022 at the cost of $250. So they will support uh, legal challenges within school districts across the state of Ohio that they feel have a, a very broad impact. Um, so for full disclosure, the case that we had last year, uh, the OSBA Legal Assistance Fund supported the district. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to discuss item E, OSBA Legal Assistance Fund? Madam President, I will make a motion to discuss item 5E, uh, OSBA Legal Assistance Fund. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I'll second that motion. Okay. The floor is open for discussion. So in regards to the situation that you referenced, that kind of helps support the board's ability to navigate that situation. They assisted in paying some legal fees. Okay. But that was, uh, I mean, it, it, it helped. It helped with the costs. Mm -hmm. okay. So basically we're paying $250 a year to that as opposed to $350 an hour for a lawyer. Uh, in no, some cases we're paying we don't get any legal advice from them okay. so we pay into them and then they will use that money to assist with legal cases around the state that could dictate the whole you know could be precedent setting so uh, you know if you say uh, men are lost a legal case then that would and it was tied to, say, school funding. School funding. Then that would have an impact on not only our school, but all schools around the state of Ohio. So they will assure that they'll give them the support that they need to try to support that school so that all schools are not harmed. As you know, noted by a lot of legislative changes, schools are always being harmed, so they're always trying to just hold the line. Any more discussion? Hearing no more discussion, Mr. Charnell, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskus? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? No. Mrs. Bear? Yes. Passes 4-1. Five F. This is Amendment 2 to the Transportation Agreement. This is between us and Peterman, which does our transportation services throughout the district. This is a five-year extension starting in July of this year, calendar year, 22. A couple of highlights. Um, over the next five-year period, we will be <coughs> receiving 38 new buses. Um, for reference, we have 74 buses that we run daily and we have 90 buses total. So the other 16 buses could be used on field trips or overnight trips or anything like that, athletics, um, or in case another bus breaks down. So we need to have some spares. Um, you know, I give Peterman a lot of credit. I worked closely with them to work on this extension, make sure it made sense for all parties involved, and they were willing to give us a $410,000 credit per year and that was to help offset because we have mechanics on staff. So that would comes out to $2 million and $50,000 million, $2 million over the course of the five-year extension. So I was very happy that we were able to get that negotiated in there. And I appreciate their willingness to do that. Um, and it also has 3% annual increases built into the contract. So judging by inflation, that, you know, it makes sense. You know, the... You always hate to look at like uh, changing services for something like this. Um, they've been doing a really good job. I haven't really heard anything in terms of transportation. There's always been bus driver shortages even before uh, the great resignation or whatever you want to call it. So to leave them and go somewhere else 
and lose all of our drivers that are contracted with them would be detrimental to the school district. And then just because someone else is cheaper, what kind of product are you going to get next year? So um, I thought this was a win for everybody to keep what we had in place because it's working. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve item F amendment two to transportation agreement? Madam President. Yes. I'd like to make a motion to discuss item F, amendment two to transportation agreement. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I'll second that motion. The floor is open for discussion. Hearing no discussion, uh, Mr. Charnell, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskis? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Baer? Yes. Passes 5-0. 5G purchase orders and blanket certificates. Um, a lot of these are governed by Ohio Revised Code and Board Policy. We do have one then and now certificate. This amount exceeded the $3,000 limit. For example, this one was for a fence around the HVAC chiller at North High School. They ended up needing additional fencing for that chiller area, which increased the amount above and beyond the purchase order. And uh, forced it into a then and now certificate situation, which is up for your approval. As far as the blanket certificates of 50,000 or more, we have three blanket certificates. One is for board paid STRS, which is the school teacher retirement fund. The health care reimbursement, this is part of the negotiated agreement, and Medical Mutual of Ohio, this is for the district insurance. So those are the three purchase orders that are placed before you. Letter 5H, student activities, program purpose goals, but proposed budgets and revisions for fiscal 22. We're doing budget revisions only for Willoughby Physical Education and for N NCI Willoughby, the Berlin account. So those are for your review and approval. And 5I, gifts and donations, the Willoughby East Lake Public Schools donated 418 books to the Willoughby East, East Lake Preschool in each elementary and each middle school. So thank you to the Willoughby East Lake Public Library for those books. Madam President, um, we're on to the superintendent's reports. Item 6A is school board recognition. Um, you guys get to start on school board recognition month. Isn't that outstanding? <laughs> The Ohio School Boards Association is celebrating School Board Recognition Month on January and to build awareness and understanding of the vital function an elected Board of Education plays in our society. Our district is joining other districts throughout the state in recognizing the important contributions that school board members will make, in most cases here, uh, to their communities. Often they were required to make difficult choices and decisions and it is really truly an admirable job that you um, that, that you took a, that you that you endeavored upon our community is fortunate to have a team of dedicated individuals on the school board and they deserve our support and appreciation and whereas it shall be the mission of the Willoughby East Lake School District to provide all students the best possible education the school board sets the direction for our community's public schools by envisioning the community's educational future the school board sets policies and procedures to govern all aspects of school district operations and the school board keeps attention focused on progress towards the goals and maintains a two-way communication loop uh, with the community. Serving on a school board requires unselfish devotion of time. You guys have figured that one out already, right? Um, service to carry on the mission and business of the school district. The school board must respond on behalf of the community community to the educational needs of the students talked about that actually tonight and the school board voluntarily accepts the above mentioned responsibilities so therefore be it resolved that in January 22 is hereby proclaimed school board recognition month and I encourage all citizens to publicly and privately thank the school board members for serving this community and for their dedicated service to our children so thank you for John what you've done over the last couple of years Lawrence, you're the second Wiley veteran at about four months of service, <laughs> and then the rest of you for what I know 
um, you'll do to your very best ability to support our students and hopefully help our district become better. So thank you. There are certificates. You get to frame these and hang these in your house. They're beautiful. They got little hands on them and everything. So <laughs> enjoy. Item A is a memorandum of understanding with the Lake County YMCA. The Lake County YMCA is currently in charge of our aftercare program. And this contract modification to the current contract is due to the losses that they have incurred because of COVID-19. When we originally drafted this agreement, um, it was based on historic numbers pre-COVID. And when COVID hit, there was no way they could generate the revenue that they would have historically and did prior to COVID. So we have reviewed their books and have, and have um, shared, we still making a profit. And to be quite frank, we absolutely do not want to take white care back over our after school care back over and try to manage that in our buildings. It was very, very difficult to do. And um, the Y has done a really, really good job of doing that for us. So it's really a service to us that we're still generating some revenue from just less than what we would hopefully post COVID. That requires a vote. Yeah. Do I hear a motion to approve a memorandum of understanding with the Lake County YMCA? Madam President, I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you, Ms. Pretori. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Mrs. Menzer. The floor is open for discussion. I, I just have to say I have personally benefited from the YMCA program and I'm very happy that we've been able to continue it. Um, our, how are they doing with their staffing thus far? They, they've been able to staff. Um, the, the biggest challenge has been the number of students are, is lower than what we had all historically budgeted for. So, but they've been okay on staffing. Okay. And they've been good communicators with us as it relates to COVID and we've worked our way through all of that and the quarantining and so, uh, you know, it's not just in the classroom. We had to, you know, children that were having to monitor and trail and, and um, contact trace in those programs as well. So it's been a lot and they've been very good partner in that process. Any more discussion? Hearing no more discussion, mis discussion, Mr. Charnello, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskus? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Baer? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Item B for your consideration is a memorandum of understanding with the Willoughby East Lake Teachers Association. And, and what, what you'll hear here is consistent with what we are seeing from all of our unions that they want to help uh, they're dedicated to our students uh, and and I really appreciate what um, WIDA was willing to do in this particular case and this memorandum of understanding um, is specifically addresses school psychologists the school psychologists work on items that are extremely time sensitive to meet the needs of IEP students very often um, they are testing students, they do attendance at assessment meetings for students, and input on individualized education plans. And when they're absent due to COVID, it's nearly impossible to find a sub, any sub, much less a sub who has the skill set of a school psychologist. So what happens is the work just goes undone. Um, so what, what we started to see was school psychologists still working but being charged a sick day and we want to honor their dedication so what this is is in a memorandum saying that specifically for school psychologists who we cannot get subs for that provided they are healthy enough to work and willing to work um, we would not charge them a sick day and allow them to do their work remotely Do I hear a motion to approve the memorandum, item B, a memorandum of understanding with WIDA Willoughby East Lake Teachers Association? 
Madam President, I'd make such a motion to approve that item. Thank you, Ms. Fratori. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I will second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Raskos. The floor is open for discussion. Hearing none, Mr. Tarnello, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Raskos? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Bear? Yes. Motion carries by a zero. Thank you, Madam President. Item C for your consideration is the 2223 High School, Middle School, and School of Innovation Middle School Course Selection Guide recommendations. Each year, the course selection guides are updated to ensure that they are in alignment with the standards of the Ohio Department of Education, that they match graduation requirements, and that we're offering courses rich in educational opportunities. This year, we made a few changes to our course guides. These include the following changes. Removal of the old ODE, Ohio Department of Education, graduation requirements, uh, because they were replaced with new uh, requirements, and those are included. Updated the SAT and ACT testing dates. Obviously, they change every single year. Changed the American government course to one half credit and added financial literacy uh, to the other half. So as you know, we've started our bank kiosks and we're doing a lot of things to promote financial literacy. Um, and, and I've heard it, well, actually I've heard it from you, um, but I've heard it from lots and lots of people and it's, it's absolutely true. One of the most vital skills our kids need to be able to do is just basic banking, home finance, et cetera, et cetera, understanding the loans and simple interest and compound interest and those things, which we're not doing very well, but we will have a course in place in high school that is a required course uh, moving forward. So that's a change in the guideline. American government has been uh, a one-year credit course and included economics, and we've just separated those two into two different courses rather than a single course. So in that economics part is where they'll hit their financial literacy. So they'll have it for a semester. Uh, for middle schools, we included the exact path Diagnostic scores as suggested selection criteria for honors classes, trying to make that a bit uh, more clear and gives kids an opportunity or an additional tool to qualify for those courses. And those are the main pieces that are in our course selection guides. Item D for your consideration is the personnel agenda. And each month, the changes in the district personnel are required to be approved by the school board. And these changes will include retirements, hiring of new personnel, supplemental contracts, and some of the payments made to people that may have worked uh, something like an athletic event. On this agenda, you will see examples of all of the above. And that is concludes. Okay, so we have item eight, meeting notification, and this is notification of our next meeting, correct? Next regular meeting. Next regular meeting, so, okay. So our next regular board meeting will be held on Monday, February 14th at 7 p.m. here at 3535 Curtis Boulevard in Eastlake. Um, and then item nine, consent calendar A, and adoption of consent calendar. Uh, do I hear a motion to approve item A, adoption of a consent calendar? Madam President, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, consent calendar. Thank you, Mr. Pretori. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I second that motion. Thank you, Mr. Boxler. The floor is open for discussion. <coughs> Hearing no more discussion, Mr. Tarnello, please take a roll call. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskus? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Bear? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. So we have uh, item 10 closing, A for adjournment. Adjournment. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? First, is that how that goes? I've made it so far. <laughs> <laughs> if this is where I mess up, we're going to call it a success. Madam President, I Great. make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Do I hear a second? Madam President, I make a Second and a third. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Charnello. Mr. Boxler? Yes. Mr. Roskus? Yes. Mr. Vittori? Yes. Mrs. Menser? Yes. Mrs. Bear? Yes. We are adjourned at 8.34 p.m. <sighs>